What's happening guys, it's the 5th of February today and I wanted to do this Bitcoin update video. It's been three months since the last video so it's well overdue. Uh, but I've got a fair bit to update. Still very bullish on Bitcoin as per my last video. But I want to mention why in detail I want to mention the a potential opposing scenario. So the bearish scenario. Um, so we're going to go into that in detail. We're going to look at the high time frame counts, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up to 69k very nicely put in and why we need to see a substantial correction following that in order for it to all look very regular. You know, that impulsive move into 69k needs to be corrected. Uh, so we're going to discuss the various playouts that that can happen. There is various ways in which it can happen from an Elliott Wave perspective, but we're going to throw into consideration the fundamentals of the charts to try and get a better idea which kind of scenario we're going to see so that's what we can discuss in today's video we're going to talk about upside targets and validation points what i want to see in the next few months what we can expect with regards to the halving all will be discussed in this video and i just want to mention it's worth sticking around to the end of the video if you are interested in my analysis and content uh, I do like to teach as well as analyze the charts and I have my website over at wave618.com. I am throwing out a deal which I'll discuss in more length at the end of this video over on Cryptology is where I do my weekly analysis and we're going to introduce the weekly votes that you can do for the uh, cryptocurrencies of your interest. Uh, so check out that at the end of the video. I'll be doing a big discount to introduce this. So but for now back to the chart so here on bitcoin we've got our five wave move up to 69k so this is best seen whenever you want to analyze the five waves it's better to go on the linear scale just click auto so the chart adjusts as you scroll and then this no doubt is a an impulse to the upside not only can you look at the sub wave count the one two three four five within it but you know it's an impulse that's finished because of the extent of the correction that follows okay there's your wave one there's your wave two. We then shift across to the right. We've got another impulse here, wave three and wave four. Okay, again, confirmed by the massive correction that we see to follow. And then subsequently, we have our extended wave five, which is further subdivided into a one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so then we have a macroscopic five wave count completed. That's a one, two, three, four, five. And now we know that five waves are in, we need to see a a relative cor a correction that is proportional in terms of time, really, um, which I don't believe has finished at this point here. This is a very fast move down relative to the 12 year move that it took from 2009 through to 2021 to get up here. I do not believe this is the end. But there are so many different ways a corrective wave can play out. So this move down from the fifth wave can play out in many different ways. We'll discuss that and I'll tell you what I think is most likely to occur. So yeah, just wanted to throw out, that's the first fundamental thing we have to appreciate. We've had a five wave move up. I don't believe that correction is the end of the correction. Um, so, so far if we're in currently February 2024, it's been just over two years. So two years and what, two years and three months since our all time high. Basically, we wanna look at it from a fib time point of view. So if we just look at what our wave one and two usually do, we just need to look at our previous wave one and wave two. So let's just, uh, I think we'll go on the log scale now just to see this a bit better. So we'll use our fib time take it from the genesis here, bring it to the top of wave one and apply it. So the termination, the lowest point of this wave two was down here. And you can see this point, yeah, this low here, it went beyond the 0.382 fib time projection here, okay? So at least 38% of the time it took to get up to its all time high up here, that's the amount of time it took. It took at least 38% of the time to fully retrace, okay? So I would expect a similar play out going ahead. So then let's just take off that to so just clean up the chart a little bit. Again, bringing back fib time, we're gonna go from our genesis to our all time high, apply it as such. Our 0.236 fib time projection comes into here, August of this year, 
yeah, might see a little bit of volatility around that point. But the 0 0.382 is even further. It's around May 2026. So it could go on a little bit longer than that, as I say, it's the last example that we saw. But classically, from an Elliott wave point of view, typically your wave two is going to go at least beyond the 0.236 fib time projection, but classically at least 0.382. Yeah, much more like I would usually aim for at least a 0.382. OK, so that's the kind of play out now. So I'm going to put a vertical line on the chart at the 0.382. OK. And then we can remove our fib time projection. Okay, so that is where I believe our correction will finish. Now let's just discuss the various possibilities. So I see this as a three wave move down. Of course, you can argue it's made up of five. There's a one, two, three, four, five. But when you look at the subdivisions of the counts, that's not really looking like a five wave impulse. So I see it as more of a first wave, a second, and a third wave down. So if we're looking at the three wave kind of zigzag move down, I'd be leaning probably towards a, a WXY. It doesn't really matter how we label it, whether it's ABC, WXY, but yeah, I would lean probably more towards a WXY here. Uh, yeah, so I'm not going to change the annotations. We'll leave ABC on just for now. Uh, but yeah, if we're going to see the bearish scenario on Bitcoin, that's the kind of play that we're looking out for. Okay, um, so it's likely to be a slow drawn out move to the downside typically in a wxy the y is very long and pronounced it comes down slower than the w and um yeah it could drag on for a good while all the way into may 2026 okay that's probably that is the most bearish scenario that i see okay taking out this low here okay as i say i am not of the opinion that is going to occur and I'll mention why. Of course, I'm not a fortune teller. It's my speculation, but there's good reason for why I don't have, I'm not leaning towards that kind of scenario. So the other options, you've got a triangle. Yeah, you could have an ABCDE triangle, which could play out. I mean, ABCDE, yeah, something like this. We could coil like this, but I expect a lot of volatility coming into the marks. We've got a US election coming in November of this year. I don't think we're just going to coil like this. OK, I think we're going to see some big swings in Bitcoin. Uh, I think it's going to be a very volatile year. I think this potential for a very good trend. So I just, of course, we can't completely ignore it, but I don't think this is the most likely scenario. OK, so that then leaves us to our flats. So we've got uh, our flats, which are divided into ABC. So this is our A. And then flats are divided into regular uh, running flats and expanding flats. So a regular flat would suggest that we come up to our equal all time high 69K and then capitulate down to our recent low down here. OK, that's the regular flat. They're not that common in Bitcoin, I have to say. OK, um, I'm leaning towards the running flat. OK. Of course, it could be an expanded flat, which basically just means you see finishes beneath the A. But I'm leaning towards this uh, running flat. And the, the reason is I am generally bullish on Bitcoin or blockchain on the whole. I think it's very future proof. I think there's a lot of tailwinds. The Bitcoin spot ETF approval was important. OK, we had a we've not gone up since the news, but we had a good trend going up into it. It was priced into the chart. And it's only retail that would have been scared that we didn't suddenly shoot up after the news. OK, those that are more experienced will know that we don't have to shoot up straight away. We can consolidate and then continue the trend to the upside. We've got the halving that is likely to take effect. That's this vertical line here. I'll talk about previous halvings and how we've behaved with those in the past. And then I've got the US election, which is this November uh, 2024 vertical line here. Both very, very important time events. So that's why I've got them on the chart here. We'll discuss how I expect price to move around these very important points in time. OK, so I'm of the opinion that we're probably going to see more of a running flat and the C could come. It's difficult to say. Maybe it might be more short lived. The C would be a little bit dragged on if it comes on that far. So maybe we don't come down straight at the US election. That would be a little bit too predictable. Maybe it comes on a bit further. Yeah, so we we'll would need to fine tune it. But this is the kind of play out that I'd be looking at. Leaning towards the running flats at present. OK. So just, yeah, we'll leave that annotation on. We are following this modified shift pitch for very, very nicely, which makes sense for corrective price action. 
previous in, in my last video we were actually i had the original pitchfork but we didn't have a lot of data in now we've got more data we can see we're following actually the modified shift pitchfork the best we've had a very nice test uh, after kind of just consolidating at the median line and using it as support several times we've then gone into the upper median line and retraced all the way to the median line before finding a little bit of a bounce and yeah so this is the pitchfork that i believe is guiding us at present and it's where i'll be placing my targets based on this year's uh, trend so that's our modified shift we've got the yearly order block level which is this high here at 46k very very important level uh, and we've got actually you can argue we've got a very nice three wave move here we've got a one-to-one -one relationship between the first leg up that's this one and the set and the and the next impulsive move up so nice one-to-one -one relationship maybe just shy of a move into 50k would have made it more regular but um yeah so there's every argument that bears could take us down from here there's certainly that setup is a very regular setup could easily take us down from here but as i say i don't believe it's the likely scenario okay um though you've got to have your invalidation point for me we're following this pitch up very nicely we've set the upper marker of the trend here at the upper median line and so as a result i don't want to see us lose the lower median line so the lower median line is my invalidation point which would come in around 35k i do not want to see us lose 35k if we lose 35k i would probably then lean towards the wxy and bitcoin capitulation okay the triangle argument would still be there but i'll be very I'd be deeply concerned about the WXY with a W, an X, and a Y. But I'd only lean to that once we lose 35K. And just beneath that, probably you're going to get your 200 week simple moving average. That's another reason that I'm bullish right now. We had a very good surging run through the 200 week simple moving average. Very important high time frame indicator. We're currently above it. And so I think there's a very good reason to be bullish, as well as the fact that the stock market US indices are very bullish right now okay all hitting all-time highs all looking very good and all look like they want to continue their trends into the next major catalyst which i see as being the u.s election okay so i believe that that is also going to allow lots of investor um positive sentiment with regards to their investments to continue uh taking on risk and allocating more funds into not just the u.s indices but more riskier assets including crypto so yeah so abc running flight is what we're leaning towards the b wave we expect a corrective scenario and this is the kind of play out that i'm looking out for here as i say i'm prepared for it to come down into the halving and then absolutely shoot up from there retrace and then hit this point here i'll explain why this 100k target up here in a moment but uh, yeah i'm prepared for that okay i don't mind it doing that but there's a good argument it just consolidates around this point and then come the halving we go up and make this move so ultimately we were looking for a double three yes yeah, so we've got a first wave second wave third wave a little bit of a pause and then we're looking for another three first second third to complete our b wave okay so a double three to complete the b wave ultimately the b wave target it just in keeping with the pitchfork up a warning line but we've also got a fib projection based off of this high to low so i always like to throw out my fibs we've got the 1.236 fib projection here at pretty much 100k so a nice round psychological level we've got a fib projection level we've got the upper warning line uh, it's still part of a corrective play out yeah so we're going up but it's still part of a correction with a big abc running flat so the correction is in keeping with the fact that we've had five wave impulse into 69k um following a correction following a corrective pitchfork uh and yet we're still tied in with the fact that the stock markets are looking incredibly strong that allows money to flow into crypto also we've had the we've got the halving on the near horizon that if we look in the past which we're going to in just a moment we'll see how that's always acted as good uh, supports and uh, demand for bitcoin as essentially supply is shrunken it's essentially creating scarcity and so it always has an uplifting effect on the market and so there's every reason that we can expect to see that continue okay so th these are the reasons that i'm looking at this uh, another key, key thing is our camera pivots which we'll also throw into the mix in a moment but yes i want to discuss the previous halvings because that is important i've mentioned it a few times without going into it so 
we've got 2012, 2016, and 2020. So 2012, this is basically what happened. So on the, I'm looking at this on the weekly time frame. Basically, we had our consolidation here, and it pretty much terminated come the halving, and we just shot up from there. Okay, yes, a little bit of a pause, but basically, we didn't look back. We just absolutely went higher and higher. A few, uh, it's about four weeks of a pause here. Where, but we ne we didn't come down, which is the important thing. We had a halving and we didn't look back. We just and then we absolutely shot to the upside. That was 2012. Okay, 2016 was a little bit different. Okay, ultimately we still flew, but not straight away. Okay, we, again this time the consolidation was around the halving. So we had our impulse down, correction. And then another impulse down. Despite our halving, we had another impulse down. It's important to remember we can still have sell offs, but still be long term bullish because of the halving. And that's something retail struggles to manage. They get impatient, they expect us to just go straight up on the news, but not necessarily the case. We're looking for a series of higher highs and higher lows in the ultimate trend. Okay, here the halving is bullish. But we had another impulse to the down. Very nice wick to the downside as um, demand came back in. And we absolutely flew once more. Okay, So that's another scenario. That was 2016. 2020 what happened? This would have been even more frustrating. Okay, Here we trended, the trend was up, had the halving, and we stayed stagnant for about two months. Yeah, maybe probably over two months here. And then we went up, came down, tested the consolidation level and absolutely flew. So you would have had, it had to be pretty patient before we absolutely flew. It's so probably all the way down to here, so almost at least three months. How much of retail is going to stick around for that? Okay, so it really takes the experienced traders to just hold on, keep monitoring the charts. Don't forget the halving is, a, is, is, is bullish. Okay, if it comes down the market, it's for some other reason, but it's not due to the halving. Okay, so the halving is on the near horizon again, and I believe this is all going to act as consolidation going into the halving. I think we're going to lead into something similar to a 2012 effect, where we had the consolidation in 2012 complete before the halving, and then, okay, a little bit of a pause. We didn't shoot up on the news. Well, it's not really news, but um, on the event, we didn't shoot up straight away. But we didn't look back. And I think we're going to get a similar effect here. I think there could be a bit of a shakeout to the downside before going higher. We could potentially, you know, do this before coming down. Again, we don't want to go beneath the invalidation point at 35k. But yeah, I'll be I think more likely we consolidate here. Yeah. Held up by the median line. Doesn't have to happen as I say, it could come down to low median line. But I think this is the more likely scenario that we consolidate. And then after the halving we're probably not going to look back and we shoot up from there okay that's the way i'm looking at it so yeah that's taken into consideration the previous halvings now i want to throw out the camera pivots so i went into this in more detail in my last video and i will just pull up the tweet so this tweet is where i annotated the camera pivot so on the weekly time frame these camera pivots represent periods of one year so you see these ranges here this is for like the year so this is the year 2023, this is 2022, 2021, etc. all the way back to 2018. And you'll see how the R3, R4, S3 and S4, R standing for resistance, S for support, have always acted very significantly. Bitcoin, of all the charts that I analyze, Bitcoin seems to be respecting these lines the best. Okay, um, And so we were looking at the fact that we had a, a weak year in uh, 2022 finishing beneath the S4 but we were looking for resistance so we tested R3 here and I wanted to see how we react to the R4 okay that was around 35k but in my last video I mentioned how it looks like we're going to push through that level okay just because of the fact that we had this initial impulse to the upside um, it looked very likely that we were going to push through that level and for that reason we can probably expect all-time highs okay so moving on, um, and I want to just bring up the bitstamp chart. It'll be a bit cleaner here. And I want to bring on the camera pivots. In fact, we'll take off the other annotations. Uh, and we run the weekly time frame. And I want to show you how 
previous year we absolutely blitzed through the r4 and it's another reason that i don't think we're going to capitulate this year and come crashing down through the s4 okay we may come down to this level again 35k we've got the s3 there the weekly s3 so as i say it's another reason why i'm not too concerned about coming down to 35k we've got the s3 support we've got the lower median line of our pitchfork we're still following the the general trend of higher highs and higher lows so i wouldn't be too concerned as long as we don't come beneath 35k i really don't want to see us lose that level otherwise as i say we could come down pretty steep so yeah potentially coming down to here but ultimately the, the reason i pulled this up is to show you how we finished the previous year very very strong and i don't believe we're going to suddenly see capitulation this year for that reason okay my invalidation point still stands coming in bidding 35k i would be worried but my bias at the present is that we push higher i believe the halving is going to take us higher uh so yeah these are the reasons stock market's looking very strong bond market making a bounce um we've got the halving We've got the Bitcoin spot ETF. Okay, it would not shot up off the news, but I still believe it's act, gonna act as uh, overall demand. Um, so yeah, I believe this is all gonna take effect, but we have to be patient and not be like retail traders that gets scared because price isn't moving in their desired direction on day one, okay? So it does require some patience. I believe everything is looking good still um but yes there is that count to be aware of that three wave move up that's our first impulse our correction arguably another impulse completed and we could come down from here okay but as long as we stay above 35k i'm happy that this trend is likely to continue and we move on into that 100k target as per this is the bitcoin index chart that we were looking at earlier uh reason being is it takes into all consideration all the charts so we've got price going all the way back to the genesis which was necessary to put in our major count um so yeah this this is everything i'm taking into consideration of course there's other things under other fundamentals that probably are worth taking into consideration but that's the way i'm seeing things it all kind of pieces together for me looking looking good uh but i as i say I, i'll say it one more time i don't want to see it come under 35k so that's pretty much all I want to say for Bitcoin for now. And uh, yeah, obviously I mentioned at the beginning of, video, beginning of the video, if you like my style of analysis, or if you want to sample it more, check out my Bitcoin, uh, not Bitcoin, my Elliott Wave and Pitchfork tutorials over on YouTube. You can sample what my teaching style is like there. So you have an idea of what to expect over on my course if you are interested. Uh, and I'll put the thumbnails for those at the end of the video. Uh, but yeah, if you're interested in the cryptology, I will be doing for the first month only, and this is for available for three days, then the code will expire, uh, is a 75% discount on the first month. And don't forget, cryptology includes access to the works, which was my full educational course. The modules are dripped slowly over the course of three months, um, with every four days a new part of the uh, course coming out. But yeah, regular crypto updates, detailed analysis on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and your top 10 voted cryptocurrencies each week. So if you are interested in that, things are looking good at the present for crypto. Uh, but yeah, I'll be keeping you all updated on my views there. Of course, this isn't financial advice, uh, but it's here to provide you more information for your own arsenal um, when making your decisions on what you want to do with your own money. But um yeah, so there we go. So the uh, discount for that will be available in the description to this video. And if you are interested in further updates, I do intend to post more regularly on Twitter with more frequent analysis, maybe just uh, picture updates that I can post there over on Twitter. All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up with that. I'll see you on the next one.